people's passion. Where did your passion for photography first come from? A certain photography you saw, or was, you know, what age it was? I got my first camera when I was 13, I think. Mm -hmm. Maybe 12 and a half, 13. Right, more or less right around the time that the Beatles were on Ed Sullivan, which changed my life in an hour. I mean, literally, that Sunday night, I liked, uh, as I wrote my book, a nuclear bomb was delivered directly into my brain, into my cortex by John Lennon. Right around the same time I got my first camera from my, my first of three ex-brothers-in-law. Well, my first brother-in-law out of three. My sister hates when I say that, but sorry, Carol. And, um, and the camera also changed my life. I, it, I, I, you know what? It meant everything to me, and I instinctively knew how it worked. I, the analogy I always make is if you're, uh, if you're a teenager and you're going to driver's ed school for the first time or learning how to drive, the first time you get behind the wheel of a, ca uh, the, behind the wheel of a car, you don't know how to drive, but you instinctively know the relationship between the gas pedal and the brake and the transmission, and that's how I was with the camera. And it's, it's the only job I've ever had in my life, you know, other than having a paper route and working at the candy store on Queens Boulevard and Continental Avenue on Saturday night, stealing Malamars from the basement. Yeah, so <laughs> I didn't really. Uh, how's been Nan with the signings and everything, the fans talking to you? It's been beyond belief, uh, this experience at, at Nam. Uh, people, you know, I'm a fan of the stuff I'm a fan of. Pete Townsend. Uh, primarily, uh, you know, whatever, whatever movie uh, that I love. And fans of mine, first of all, I never dreamt in a zillion years that anyone would know what I've done or recognize a photo or know my name. I, that That's Twilight Zone shit. Stuff, sorry. Uh, and uh, everyone here has been beyond unbelievable, like reverential and truly uh, been transformed a lot of them by what I've done and uh, like what the hell how did that happen you know because I'm too busy working you know I'm tunnel visioned you know when I'm working and uh, I never thought about being no and I'm not famous what I am is I'm known to a certain little slice of a segment of the pie of the rock and roll world people say you're so famous no I'm not famous people are famous I'm just me very cool do you mind doing a quick little tour you yeah yeah of your I do not mind I do yeah, not start, mind it's our most famous one right here it's the, okay this one has become really famous um, I don't know if I can say x-rated words so we'll keep it clean ladies yeah. and gentlemen um, this is a picture of Freddie Mercury of course on stage at Wembley Stadium in London in 1986. So a lot of people mistaken for having been shot in 1985 at Live Aid, but no, this is the, the next year they did a big tour. And what I like to say is, when I went back and looked at the proof sheets, I realized that this was like, like the third frame I had shot that day. Oh, wow. I could have taken the rest of the day off. I know a strong image when I see one, and I know a bad image when I see one because I've probably shot more than any photographer on the planet as far as bad photos. But sometimes, sometimes we get the job done. So, what is the average you take to like how much you shoot to how much you get actually good shots? Uh, I it's funny because I've been asked that a couple of times. I have a really good batting average. Okay. Someone wrote me a note once. It was I don't know it was a couple of months ago, and they said like like out of a, a roll of 36 pictures sorry that's film kids if you remember film they were lucky if they got three or four good ones out of 36 well, my batting average is easily 500 or 600 which will get you in the hall of fame but that's just me you know all right let's move on to the next photo which one you want yeah, we're okay well we're heavy on queen and led zeppelin yeah. back here <laughs> this is just a moment this is a moment of Freddie putting on his makeup before a show and um, well, I like to say that uh, 
this would never happen again because if you look at someone like the Rolling Stones, let's take Mick Jagger. Mick Jagger has a guy who brings him his tea. And then the guy who brings Mick his tea has a guy who goes out and buys the tea and gives it to the guy who brings him his tea. Then that guy has a guy that picks out what kind of tea, the tea that the guy who buys the tea will have to buy to give to the guy who gives Mick his tea. And then there's another person who has to approve the money to, to be spent by the guy who picks out the tea to give to the guy who buys the tea to give to the guy who gives Mick his tea. In other words, that's why concert tickets are 500 bucks. Freddie would have nine guys doing his makeup if it was today. So that's what I love about this picture. Sorry, Mick, but that's the way it goes. Yeah, this is this is just um, a, can, a candid moment, which are my favorites of the band backstage in South America in 1981. We were the first band to to bring the the whole rig, the stage, the lights, the whole enchilada. Peter Frampton, who was a friend of mine, had had gone down to South America a couple of years before with a guitar and a couple of lights, but. We went down there with everything, and the band was treated like the Beatles, and then some. And they're still the biggest band in South America, and it was, it was an experience of a lifetime. Uh, uh, this is this is a picture of my dear friend Brian May tuning up before a show, and if you look right at the very edge of the mirror, the frame, there's a certain photographer's reflection. We don't need to talk about him. And um, this is, this is uh, the kind of moment that I've shot many times with many artists. And you want to, if you have a job like mine, you want to be invisible. You want to be a fly on the wall. That's how you get things like this. The irony is the way to become invisible is by being completely visible at all times because once they get used to seeing you around, you become part of the fabric of the tour. So that, that's the irony, you know, I'm around all the time, so they don't realize I'm around. <laughs> that's, that's how it works. Oh, I love this one. I love this one, and this is the one that we picked for the cover of my book. Yeah. I didn't want to put a rock star on the cover of my book because I didn't want it to be, you know, the, the next Led Zeppelin book or fill in the blank book. and. The title of the book being exhilarated and exhausted, I looked at this frame and I thought, that says it. Yeah. And it, it, as far as I'm concerned, and I don't, I'm not an expert on anything, but what I do, uh, I feel that this makes the, draws the reader in and say, well, what's in this? The, everyone thinks it's Keith Moon's drum kit. It is not, it's Roger Taylor's from Queen. And, yeah, uh, I, I and it, it wasn't song. kind of the guy who would destroy his stuff afterwards, but obviously, you know, they don't have a temper here and there. All right, here's Live Aid. This is, this is the famous show. Yeah. This is it. Um, I realized when I saw the movie, well, I've known this, but when I saw the movie, a day after it came out, and, and it, it, it's the book ends at the beginning and the end of the movie, or Live Aid, and I was one of the 20 people that were on the stage with them. So they had to play you? Nope, but but I'm in a Star Is Born. Um, uh, you know, four band members, so a couple of security guys, the cameramen, roadies, and me. That's maybe 20 people. The most famous f a half hour of rock music ever. Was it a good gig? I don't remember the gig because I was in work mode. I don't remember any gig. But when I went back and looked at it on YouTube, you know what I realized? Brian May was on fire i've never heard him play like that like he played that day so this i, I used to hate this because of the cameraman but yeah. I've, I've been convinced that it adds to it ah, it's flavor flavor all right let's end with uh, michael jackson Ready. Uh, when queen would play at certainly la or new york mm -hmm. a lot of celebs would come usually music people not so much movie star people i remember donna summer coming i remember olivia you know, Andy Warhol came in New York, blah, 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 blah. But one night in L.A., Michael and his brothers walked in, and it's just another moment to me. And, and I had known Michael since he was yay high. 
and I just, you know, shot some frames and moved on. I've got stuff of, of uh, uh, Michael talking to Brian as well. It's not that big a deal. It's my job, and I shoot it and move on. I, you know, but then who knew, right? Who knew what would happen to these yeah. guys? All so right, it's just well, a quick moment. Cool, and then uh, let's end with where can we get your books online? Uh, my book is available, well, it's published by Real Art Press uh, out of London, and that's R E E L A R T P R E S S, realartpress.com. Go to their website. Um, the Light Power Collection also can get you a book. They're in Germany, and they're the ones sponsoring this this whole show um, the obvious other places where one would buy books you, you know what they are um, but uh, uh, obviously that, that, that big company online that <laughs> you started with books and sells everything now but um, it's called Neil Preston Exhilarated and Exhausted and that's how I feel every day of my life that's how I got the title so Thank you so much, Sharon. You're so good. Uh, anytime. Um, yeah. There's more Led Zeppelin around the corner. But you want to do some more? I don't yeah, know. yeah, yeah. I don't want to take up too much no, no, let's yeah, do Zeppelin. More, <laughs> and we're walking. We're walking. We're walking. We're walking. Because there's some good stories here. Okay, cool. Okay. Jimmy Page All right. right here. This is Jimmy Page. This was the actually used as the cover of his photo autobiography book that came out about five years ago. One night I was on the plane and uh, the tour plane and someone who worked for the band came over and said, Jimmy needs a passport photo because he and Robert are going to Egypt after this leg of the tour and they need something for the Egyptian visa. Okay, no problem. When do they need it at the Egyptian visa? Uh, 12 noon tomorrow. (laughs) You know, this is like midnight. Okay, so I grab Jimmy and I find a portion of the airplane that's got a clean background because you can't shoot any official passport or visa photos that have any clutter in the background. Three frames I shot, boom, boom, boom. He said just pick out the the best one. I mean, it wasn't about picking out a a beautiful photo of Jimmy. It was about getting one that fit the dimensions and everything. And um, I got the film to the lab. I stayed at the lab because... This was a big rush, and it had to be done, and you never know what can happen with the lab or people whipping out prints, you know. And anyway, I made the deadline within a half an hour, and 35 years later, 40 years later, it's the cover of his book. (laughs) So, but my my, my best friend, my best friend always says, there's something about this photo in the eyes that you caught his soul. Uh, You know what? Maybe I did, maybe I didn't, but I like it. Um, and then we've got a couple back here. And then these, again, these are all courtesy of the Light Power collection here. Uh, this is a very famous picture, arguably the most famous picture of anyone drinking Jack Daniels. I've been asked, was there really whiskey in there? To which I say, it's Jimmy Page, you better believe there is whiskey. And, uh, we, we, we tried to, to get a, uh, the Jack Daniels company to get a big print of this for their walls, uh, their corporate headquarters, and they refused because they told us we can't buy it. In the photo, he is not drinking responsibly. Uh, <laughs> he's not driving. He's, he's about to rock out. Jeez. It's Jimmy Page. He can drink any way he wants. Yeah. Um, Where, where's this one with the bird? Okay, this, this, is a, this is a very well-known photo. Uh, so I like to call Robert holding his bird. Um, outdoor show at Kizar Stadium in San Francisco in 1973. The, a rare daytime outdoor gig. And uh, because it was San Francisco, they, the band decided they'd have two cages. Uh, six doves, white doves in one cage behind Jimmy's amps. Six white doves in a cage behind Jonesy's amps. And the idea was at the end of Stairway to Heaven which is the end of the regular set. They would release the birds into the sky as a metaphor for San Francisco, peace and love. You know, Robert's a real hippie at heart. And, uh, and they did. The song ended. They opened their cages. I, I, I like to call them pigeons, but they're white doves. Um, wink, wink. At any rate, uh, the birds fly around, but one bird 
did a slow burn around the crowd and came right back to the stage. Robert put his hand out and it just landed on his hand. Oh, wow. It was a happy accident. And I like to say that uh, if that bird would have landed on Jimmy Page's hand, it might not have turned out too well for the bird. <laughs> um, you, you think rock tours are glamorous? Yeah. That's what it's all about, yeah. literally. Give me some sleep. Uh, there isn't, you know what? It's kind of like working on a movie set when you're at hour 19. Mm -hmm. You would give all that overtime back for just a little sleep. This is the glamour of a rock tour, ladies and gentlemen. That's John Bonham, by the way. And um, here we go. This is one of the first backstage photos I ever shot in my life at the Singer Bowl in Queens. I knew the promoter, he let me in. I turned around and I, I knew Je who Jeff Beck was because it was Jeff Beck's show. And this is a very young Robert Plant. Yes. And I love the look on Robert's face because it he looks as if he's thinking, I'm gonna be able to have sex with every, any girl I want for the next 80 years. <laughs> but you know, the old U-Haul truck and everything, and it, it's, it's a moment, but. It's a moment that means a lot to me. See, Queens, New York, 1969. Which is amazing since I'm only 30. <laughs> anyway, anyway, so that's the story, Morning Glory. All right, well, thank you so much. You're, you're welcome. Thanks for letting me uh, go on and on and on. And um, thank you for enjoying the photos, and, and I'll see you later. I really enjoyed the stories. Thank you.